This is Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans with me, Cheryl Burke, an iHeartRadio podcast. Hey guys, welcome to Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans. I have a very special and amazing guest, but before I even give it away, I just give it, it's a person. Um, it is a person. <laughs> I'm that's, a. Well, that's good to know. We've, we've established a lot so well, far. Well, now tonight. you just gave it away. No, I just, I'm just. Everyone speaking. knows that voice. Uh, bag. Sorry. I'm going to call you Bag. That's fine. Most do people, people call do. you back? A lot of people do. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be very, I hope, flattered by what I'm about to say. Okay. I was only allowed to watch one hour of TV a week because I come from the original Dance Mom. Yeah. It, it was Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Beverly Hills 90210. You're the only celebrity on Dancing with the Stars that I've never had to Google work. You're like kidding. that is, a, no, you don't understand. I've Googled every <laughs> single, oh, and Ian Ziering, obviously. Oh, that's amazing. But like, oh, and Jenny Garth. Yes. Who else? And is Shannon. Oh, Shannon Doherty. Yeah, Shannon yeah. did the show but also. Like, you, you, I had so bed I'm, sheets. So I'm I slept. Like eight. I slept on your face every single freaking night. I don't know how night. I feel about that. Like, I don't know how Shannon's going to feel about it either. But like, I also <laughs> had trading cards. Do you remember? Uh, of course. So we just did uh, '90s Con over the weekend <laughs> and signed a bunch of those trading cards. And I made fun Whoa. of uh, fellow cast members for some of the pictures that were on those trading no, cards. Those were, you guys were really, you guys were so cool. It was almost like, wow, I was so like, I want to be like this person. I was like really into Shannon. I don't know yeah. their actual characters, but I had the biggest crush on Luke Perry. You rest Did in you? peace. Yes. Yes. Like so hot, like too hot to handle. You know, though, coming from uh, Dancing with the Stars, it's such a machine when you're in it. Like, it yeah. seems really cool to anybody on the outside looking at it, but it's like, I know you're doing the photo shoots, you're doing the spray tans, you're doing the thing, the sex, you're showing up the for lies, the stuff. The spray yeah, tans. Yeah, like I, uh, I, you know, I, I look at those trading cards and I remember when we did the shoots. Like, I remember what was happening that day and oh, wow. who was arguing over wearing what. And who, it's, I remember all of those things. Well, we are going to, because this is We're actually something into I'm really it? into, because yes. you don't understand. I'm a freaking super fan. Okay. When I first met you, hey guys, welcome to Sex Lies and Spray Tits. My guest, Brian Austin Green, hey. obviously. Welcome. Yay. I mean, what an intro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I am just like a like fangirling over here, and I don't know what to do with myself. But I will say to you, that when I danced with Ian Ziering season four, I based my life off seasons on Dancing with uh -huh. the Stars because that's how much it's consumed my life. Um, you walked in. I did. Oh, you remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And I you? had the I had the mic pack and the whole thing, and <laughs> oh. and I was like, and I so Ian had reached out to me because he was so excited that he was dancing with you because you had won before. So he was like, I've got a chance, you know. Like he was. And when really did that change? Excited. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That. So I showed up, and it was like, and so I had already. Um, I, I really wasn't watching the show at that point, but right. he had talked so much about you. I was Aww, like, oh my God. That's so sweet. So he's going to be in the room with Cheryl Burke and then we're going to do the whole thing. And and then when I met you, you you kind, you kind of seemed like you didn't really know me very, very well. No, because I was actually, I was fangirling. See, so it was, it's crazy. But I have a resting bitch face, that's, so that's the problem. <laughs> that's perception though. Yeah, like totally. it's, it's crazy how I perceived it as you had no idea who I was and you oh, were like, no. why is this dude wearing a microphone? Why, like we need to rehearse because we, <laughs> you know, we, we run on Monday and it's that's live and vibe. we have stuff to do. Yeah. And that um, was before I was media trained. <laughs> It's a whole, it's a, no, whole, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Like I had no idea until doing the show how much goes into it. I really didn't. I, 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 which is one of the reasons why I did the show. I was, Sharn and I were already dating. Right. Um, but you're getting to the gossip way too early. Okay, like well, this was this coming in towards the roll. end. This is, I just but yeah, run. You, take I just, a, you know what? We're taking it over. I just grabbed the take bull it. by the horns. Right? You know, I was a big fan of the breakfast club when I was a kid. And is so that Tom Berge, was Tom Bergeron on that? No, Tom. <laughs> Oh wait, sorry. No. See what I tell, what I'm telling you is Tom I've Bergeron only seen your, actor, your show. <laughs> oh wait, I thought there was like a freaking like talk show called the breakfast club. It no, might... the breakfast club is a movie. With, oh, oh, see, with Emilio I haven't Estevez seen Grace either. I haven't and... seen it. Don't know who that is. <sighs> I know it's sad, but is you it? should, you should call this show like generational, like, uh, you know, problem. Uh, upheaval. Like um, the breakfast club. See that? Remember that picture? The, the no. song, don't you forget? Oh, yes. I know that girl. Yeah. But she was Molly she was Ringwald. on a lot of other things. She what she was in tons of movies at that at that point. Yeah, yeah. Molly Ringwald was a massive star. Is she still alive? She is still. Well, good on her. 
I love. <laughs> you know what? You just never know nowadays, guys. Love, like, why is that? I love that that is, but I get it because I ask the same question. Like, well, uh, somebody will be talking about someone and I'll go, is that person still alive? Is, like what's this? his name? Ali? What's his name? Oh my God. Layla Ali's dad. What's his name? Muhammad Ali? Correct. Is he still alive? Because no, Max was no, like giving pa- me shit. He passed away. Oh, he rest in peace. A while ago. Rest in peace. Okay. You know what? Oh, Let's just start. Gosh. Boy, this is going to be a rough <laughs> podcast. I feel it. I feel I, it coming. I feel it in the okay, air. Okay, so when you the air's thick right now, it is. Can, it is. You can let's feel wipe this the podcast. sweat off your armpits, <laughs> and let's get to business. Okay, we're gonna just talk all okay. about everything. All right. Let's just take it back to when you were little, Brian Austin Green. Okay. Was your name always Brian Austin? No, it Green? was Brian Green. There what? Was, but there what was happened? another Brian Green in SAG. Oh, God so when I joined it. the union, they were like, "You kind of have to have a middle name," and Wait, I was really? like, "I kind of don't have one." <laughs> and they were like, "Well, you." kind of need to come up with one. So are they legally allowed to say like that? Or yeah. like a stage name basically? Yeah, it was, Whoa. it was honestly to keep, uh, the, to keep the records and everything separate within the union of when checks and stuff were coming in. Got it. Um, so we, we started going through family names and, uh, we, we ended up on the map <laughs> I mean, it <laughs> because rolls Brian off the Green tongue. is, but Brian Green though does not. It doesn't. There's something Brian missing. It's Austin fragmented. Green, right. It's, it's a very, it's, it's, it's odd because sentence. it's a very, like Brian Green is such a simple name, Basic. but it was like, God, to fit a name in between. Like at one point we, my <laughs> grandfather, my, my mom's dad, his name was Peter. Okay. So we were like, Ooh, Brian Peter Green. <laughs> But then it was like, okay, but my initials are Brian P. Green, and that's probably oh, going to be a problem at some yeah. point. People yep. will, you know, on you. use that against me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we settled on Austin. I like Austin. Uh, Austin Powers, Brian Austin Green. See? Austin, Texas. That's Who, where everyone's moving nowadays. Which is which, which is exactly the part of the map we pointed to when we were oh, like, really? Oh, Aust- Austin. <gasps> yeah, awesome. that's, how, that's how it happened. We literally went through, we were going through like the entire map. I remember trying to find city names and state That's names so cool. and territory names that were all that, what that, that a great worked. conversation like this this is like really interesting do people know is this on wikipedia i i don't think it it's is. not although you guys, this there's is not there's not really a lot of stuff that is correct on wikipedia Very true. Like i've gone on wikipedia and it's like they i money though wasn't that i had <laughs> I wasn't born in Bangladesh. I don't understand why right? that's... I was born in Van Nuys, California. Like, you guys are way off. Speaking of... Yeah. yeah. What was... So, you were born... You're an LA boy. Yeah, I am. North Hollywood. <laughs> to be exact. Yeah. Would you say that, like, being raised in LA kind of forced you into the entertainment industry? Or no. did you come with like, was your family already involved in the entertainment industry? How did it, this all start? Like I'll, how? I'll gladly tell you this. I think this, no, this isn't on Wikipedia either. <laughs> That's good. It might be. I don't. don't it's on sex me. lies and spray tans. That's what it's on. I'm old. And so like the internet to me is You're just one of those old. things where I get on. It's like, I, how is, you know, how do you send faxes through this thing? JLo's older than you. Um, Barely. No, but she's I, older. I knew J Lo when she was dancing when on she was in color J-Lo. because I was I was doing nine hundred two one zero at that point. When she was a freaking fly girl. Okay, fly we're girl. not talking about this. Yeah. So okay. We could. So let's go back. Let's go back to the question that you asked. Uh, stay on topic. <laughs> um, so I was going to. My dad is a drummer professionally. Cool. So I grew up in music. Um, he was touring when I was young. He was touring with like Glenn Campbell, and he played on Rhinestone Cowboy, and he, and he was doing all sorts of stuff. So I was going to performing arts schools when I was young mm-hmm. to study music. And I was going to a performing arts school on the USC campus. And I had to ride a bus there because it was so far away from North Hollywood. It's about an hour and 15 drive on a bus. And one of the kids that I was on the bus with had an agent and was doing commercials. And I only found that out because he always had uh, toys and stuff on him. And I was like, are you rich? Like, how do you always have all the cool stuff? And he was like, oh, no, I do commercials. And I haven't, you know, I, and my parents give me a bit of the money that I make. I was like, that's awesome. Like, I want to do that. Yeah, like, I want to make <laughs> like, some money. I want right. to hustle. <laughs> how do I make this happen? It's amazing. So I went home and I told my parents, I was like, I want to be an actor. And they were like, of course you do. <laughs> Right. Last week you wanted to be a unicyclist and now, you know, 
and now you want to be an actor. So in six months, if it's something that you're still interested in, then, then we'll look into it. Six months later, I still wanted to, still wanted to try it. Mm-hmm. I, I went and met with his agency, this guy, Jeremy Gosh. A gosh? Like, oh gosh? I, oh my yeah, gosh. Exactly like, oh gosh. Love it. Um, like gosh, gosh, be gosh. Whatever that's like store was. Oshkosh Bagosh. Okay, Those were overalls. That wasn't a store, I don't think, was it? Oshkosh. Don't, I don't know. know. Doesn't matter. We're, we're, I only we're, know we're Beverly Hills 902 and Dancing with the Stars. Talking about overall True. companies. So um, I met with his agent and and I had to read a, uh, a commercial, like a Smucker's commercial thing. And then I had to read a scene from Little House on the Prairie. And I was terrible because I'd never done it before, but they signed me. So I you ended up terrible. I, I was a cute kid. Well, that's good. I'm glad you're paying yourself that that's compliment. That's all I had going for me at that point. I was like a really smiley, easygoing, cute kid. How old were you? I was nine. Wow. Yeah. Um, were you nervous? Super nervous because I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't book I was only going on commercial auditions mainly, and mm-hmm. I didn't book anything for a year. Oh my God. Look I just want to squeeze that guy you. Was, right? Look at that Come face. Come on now. And then became this. This. Crazy and this thing. became that stallion. Like, um, wow. You must have, you broke a lot of hearts. Not, didn't you? not Little a gray hearts. hair on his head. And now look at me. That's crazy. So even prior to like your commercial auditions, yeah. do you have brothers, sisters? Do you have- I, have? I have an older brother and an older sister. And are they in the business? No, nobody, nobody in the family is. Nobody has- Well, your dad kind of-ish. <sighs> music, music and is TV so different. Are so different. Yeah. Um, and so, your mom, no, it was very, it was very much kind of like my own path. I was blazing. Like nobody, there was really nobody like around to, there was nobody around to give me any pointers right. or do anything. Like there was nobody I could really watch and learn from. Or have I a ended mentor. up doing a show though when I was 10 and a half. Mm-hmm. I started doing uh, Knott's Landing, it was called. It was like a nighttime soap. And I did that for about four and a half years. And it was great because my character was, uh, they would just kind of throw me into scenes every once in a while. I'd like walk through the background. It's like, oh, Abby, your son is here. You know, I'd like have a puppy on a leash or I'd like, like, be you getting yogurt out of the sack. fridge. But I'd be able to watch these people like yeah. on set oh, acting. Cool. I, I was this young kid, but I was able to watch what it was like. And I would sneak on set when they would be doing like love scenes and things like that. And I'd like, Mm, I'd like mm, hide mm. behind plants and stuff and just watch and see how it all went down. (laughs) I got caught a few times. Oh my God. I see a pair of eyeballs. Oh, so great. This like 11 year old kid hiding behind like a palm tree. Was this before like standards and practices were invented or like, I, it was, uh, this was like, just after like Wizard of Oz, like this was, oh this was very early on. I've been acting for a long time. I've never even seen Wizard of Oz. Don't, <sighs> don't you judge me. Okay? I'm, I, I am. It's only Pretty Woman. I am I've seen Pretty you. Woman in Beverly Hills, not a 2 Well, I'm, I'm it. judging you for that as uh, well. Well, that wasn't my fault. That was my Filipino nanny who we've talked about prior to this interview. She who, was a big, she was a big fan of That's how she was learning okay. English. Got it. And then I learned how to talk like a prostitute. At a very young age, but this interview that, isn't that about me. That is a me. skill that I'm sure you have used. I definitely for my dancing for career. Most of your life, yeah, correct. From that point. Um, so, did you come from a divorced family, or your no, parents are still together? My parents are still together. That's amazing. They're still living in the same house. Whoa. That I grew up in in uh, in Valley Village. Wow. So yeah, when I go when I go visit them, like I I see the bedroom that I grew up in, which was funny. So my dad. <laughs> My dad, like we had a, it was a very like middle-class lifestyle. We weren't hurting for money, but we weren't like doing incredibly well. But, um, I remember at one point I, I wanted a better bedroom. Like I wanted, like, it was kind of this country style, the house. And I was like, I'm a kid. Like, I don't want to be in a country bedroom. I want something like modern and cool. And so my dad made me pay for the entire thing carpeting, paint, wow. furniture, the the whole thing. And now I go back and it's back to being a country bedroom. And I walk in, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe that I lived in this little... Did it bring up like a lot of memories, like good memories? It did, yeah. It was, I mean, I, like I remember 
where my bed was and I remember what part of the ceiling I would look at and where my TV was and where my desk was. And it, yeah. Like you have... It's really interesting. Yeah, huh? you have the the memory of mm-hmm. like, oh, I remember... The long-term like, memory. I remember laying in this room and like yeah. I lived in this room for years. Well, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. Awesome. Yeah. So do you think that like coming from a family that has never really gone through so much trauma, right? As a family, Mm -hmm. I would assume. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right, no. Did that help with, I guess, being in the entertainment industry? Because I have, like for me, I've I've observed, and I can also speak from my own experience, that like a lot of entertainers, Mm -hmm. right, in general, Mm -hmm. we entertain, of course, because we love it and we love the art, but we're also looking for reassurance and validation. Do you find that, because you had that at home, that for you, it was purely for the art? No, no. I, I, I think for me, there was validation in it also. Mm-hmm. I, um, my, my family was, I, I had a really sort of healthy, normal childhood, mm-hmm. but my family, we, I, when I was young, we, I never learned the skills of being able to like sit around a dinner table and have healthy right. debate right. and have differences of opinion and that being okay. Mm-hmm. It was very, um, it was very sort of this, you know, from my parents, God bless them. And they bust that they were great parents mm-hmm, morally. Mm-hmm. They, they did s- such a good job of, of parenting, but it was very, um, we've learned from our experiences in life and this is the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. So they didn't, There's no room for, they didn't set opinions. us up to fail to which you learn. I I've always say, said to people that I've learned way more in life from my failures than I have from my successes. Absolutely. My successes have just, they've, they just come, you just kind of hang on and you go, Oh great. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, when you fail, it's like then you, you know, you have to look back at things and you make little tweaks and you figure out what didn't work and you try and fix it and you stumble a little bit. It makes it, you who you are. It creates. Yes. Yeah. Because like, imagine if you just had a life full of success, like what the, like how boring would that be? I think that's a big problem though, uh, for kids that are raised in families with money where it's just sort of given to them, they don't have to sick. work for it. Correct. That, but it's also a horrible life for that person. It's a horrible life. Like it, they're actually not necessarily happy, no, right? Because money not is all. not happiness. Money doesn't buy love. Found out the hard way with that one. But like literally, it was like it's it's there's a fine line, right? Of like also most people find their purpose is found outside themselves, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So if that's the case, and then you come from money, why why even live? Right, right? Because what are you what are you living for? I'm just here to like spend some of this money and you get everything you want. You want daddy bought me a yacht. Daddy bought me this. But at the end of the day, are you happy? Like did that buy your happiness? You're still fucking miserable. Right. Oh, totally. So I think that's amazing. I mean, that's admirable that your parents did that. Now I think it's maybe our gen. I would say that we're the same. I'm 39. I'm 50. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's just a bunch of numbers. It's not the same generation. Ish. It's, It's like ish, right? I so old ish. Did you ever have a pager? Absolutely. I also text on my. Did you do that? A seventeen was an N. Just visualize it. One seven. Yeah. N. Oh, I I still to this day remember like of course I had getting a, pager. a boobs text was one of my favorite things. It was oh like you God. turn eight, the pager upside zero, down. Zero zero eight. Oh yeah. Five. I can see now why you're such a good, solid man. And I'm being serious when I say this because it's very rare. Like, do I ever, I guess nowadays too, it's so common to divorce, Mm -hmm. right? It's so common. Like most of, I would say most of society today, their parents have either divorced or something happened, right? Um, But there is a sense of, uh, I think, grounding. Like whenever I'm like with you, like your energy definitely like it feels that you're super grounded at all costs. Like it doesn't matter. Nothing really shakes you. Mm-hmm. And that's a good thing. That's awesome. And I think that's really hard to find, especially in the entertainment industry, mm. because like this is, I think, um, very, I think it's common that like, I think our art really reflects of who we are as people and the way we were raised. And I think it's beautiful regardless, right? I'm not judging it yeah. at all, but there is a sense of calmness. There's always been. Thank you. The, 
maybe, maybe like five times we've hung out, but like still, <laughs> obviously Sharna I, has I, seen I, this amazing man, right? And I'm so happy for her. Like Sharna, I've known Sharna since she started dancing with the stars here, but I just remember like, you know, there were moments in her life that she just wasn't happy. And I think she did the work to really she find did. it within herself, but she also, and with that, you know, you are what you put out there and she found you and you found each other. We were, we were both though. I had come out of my marriage. So, uh, you know, I had been with Megan for 15 years. We were wow. married for 10, had oh. three kids. I had no idea you guys were together that long. Yeah. Wow. Um, she was, she's, how old was she? She is now 37. So you guys got together when she was, she was like 18. Whoa. 19. Yeah. We, so Sharna and I, we, we really met at a point where she had been really working on herself hard for, she'd been single for almost five years yeah. at that point. Yeah. I had been single for two and just really aggressively mm -hmm. in therapy. I had come out of, I had uh, this neurological stuff that had hit me before then that I had come out of. And mm -hmm. in coming out of that, therapy was a big part of it because I I spent four and a half years recovering from stroke-like symptoms without ever having had a stroke, but right. I couldn't speak. I so couldn't let's talk about this really quick because you had vertigo. Were you diagnosed with having vertigo? or Verti Vertigo was one stage right. of it. It was, I had ulcerative colitis and then I had vertigo. And I was bedridden for like three months, but oh both things were undiagnosable. Right. I, nobody could figure out all the specialists. You got brain that, that scans, saw. you saw a neurologist. Yeah, I had a neurologist then. So these neurological things started happening after the vertigo. And that was, it was four and a half years of my life. Um, wow. I got to the point where I shuffled like I was a 90 year old man. <gasps> I couldn't speak. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. I couldn't. Uh, and this was because of an accident that you and Megan had gotten? No. This this was nothing to do with that. It was dietary. Stop it. It's completely dietary. Wait, the press has it wrong. <laughs> completely wrong. Well, Wait. it's a it's a very it's a confusing uh story. Right. So it it ends up I again it was all undiagnosed by Western medicine. So I ended up having to uh, finally find a doctor that is much more into like kinesiology and right. Eastern medicine. Um, and, uh, he was like, oh, you have such internal inflammation from Whoa. gluten and dairy, things you've stress. eaten your whole life, stress that, uh, that you couldn't tell were a problem because they're internal. It was internal inflammation. So there was no way of right. seeing Proving. visually from the outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I'm sure you felt fine and you did. And it, I, I did, I was active my whole life. I worked out. I did like, I was very, I, I was that guy. Um, and you got a couple of, of opinions. Oh, I had I had a doctor at Cedars that is, uh, he's one of the top neurologists in the country. Right. And he would share everything that was going on with me with his colleagues and try and figure out what was going on. I'd done over 190 blood tests. I had two MRIs. Um, and it got to the point where he was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on with you. Uh, so good, it you know, paralyzed you. Like you couldn't work. You couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't. couldn't I had such brain fog that I reintroduced my my best friend of like twenty five plus years to my sister, who he had also known for twenty five plus years. Wow! Because they were both in the same room, and I was like, "Oh, Scott, you've met my sister Lorelai before, right?" And he was looking at me like, "Like you I, just genuinely just did not remember." Genuinely, like I. J it just, like, to obviously. me, that was like what you do when people are in a room. You make sure that everybody right. knows everybody. Right, out of respect. Yes, yeah. yes. And I, and I just had no concept of that that was strange at all. So did that freak you out? Oh, absolutely. Because I had no idea what caused it. I had right. no idea if I could relapse again. I had no, right. I, it's, when you're, when you're kind of stumbling through uh, recovering from something, but thinking like, God, what put me here in the first place? Mm -hmm. Nobody's been able to tell me. Um, have you seen the light at the end of the tunnel? Like, have you uh, through maybe changing your mentality? Like, I believe that with the stresses that of life that it, that does in a way, though, I know people will disagree with me, but I believe that if your mental health is not intact, that huge. can completely paralyze you to the point where, you know, certain diseases happen. And like, I know that it's, a, it's controversial, but like, 
I believe it a hundred percent. When you, and your brain therapy. is lazy, right? Like if you stop using, if you stop learning, you know, if you stop staying curious, like that's the, your brain will turn into mush. It's a muscle. Like, yes. You're it's, you know, you go to the gym and you work out, you, you need to be doing the same things for your brain. And which you can't is, even go to the gym and work out if your brain's not intact. It, it controls everything. Literally right. like I couldn't, I, like I was in recovering, I would read Dr. Seuss books to my kids because they were so complex verbally wow. to read. Wow. So it was like gymnastics for my brain. And how like are your kids Fox handling? Fox and Socks and those books wow. were like, oh my God, I could barely get through oh, those. This is crazy. So you really don't still have like a hundred percent definitive. I'm No, not a hundred percent definitive, but I have been, I fully recovered from it. I've been a hundred percent since then. Yeah. Um, a hundred percent though has been yeah. tough because coming out of it, I was like mid forties. So it's like, okay, how much is age related, like memory issues and things like that? Yeah. And how much is possible left over from what you don't, I, I don't know if I'll ever completely know the answer to that. And I don't know if I'm supposed to, I, you know, right. I don't know. And if, that's okay. It's, it's totally like surrender okay. and the body keeps score. Like your body, our bodies are so smart. Like even if it's trauma that maybe, I'm not saying in your case, I'm just saying in general, like when people don't talk about the traumas, it will, your it body remembers. It and so up. it'll somehow detox itself, right? From that, whatever it's trying to heal from. Yeah. One of the reasons why I went into therapy um, coming out of that was I had to spend so much time listening, which I'd never really done in life. Like I had, right. I, in growing up, I, I sort of, because of the the skills that I had not really learned as, as a child, I didn't have the ability to, to have healthy debates and those things. Mm -hmm. Like I would, as soon as somebody, there were conflicting um, opinions or thoughts on things, I could feel my blood boiling. Like I could, I could feel myself getting defensive and I felt like, mm -hmm. oh, somebody's challenging me because I don't feel the same way. And so they're, you know, they're thinking something's wrong with me for feeling this way. I didn't, I didn't understand the concept of, Oh, you can have two different opinions mm -hmm. and they're just opinions. Like it's, there's no, there doesn't have to be judgment within that. So I started into aggressive mm -hmm. therapy and realized like, oh, I can stress played such a huge part on what it is that I went through. Huge part. Um, and society celebrates stress here in America, at least, um, because if you go to Europe, it's different, right? People think you're crazy for working this much, but here right. you're a hustler, which is right. a good thing. And right. then you don't have a vacation. If you go on vacation, you're, you're lazy. lazy. <laughs> yeah. You're a lazy person. Uh -huh. Um, but it's just so fat. I mean, I could talk about, I know this show is about dancing with the stars and we will get there. <laughs> don't you worry. And we're going to get there right oh, we'll, now, we'll, but like and it's clearly gonna be glorious. Yeah. Let me go get my glitter shirt and, okay. we'll, and we'll change. I mean, you could be shirtless cause that's what we do on dancing <laughs> with the stars. Just wear your pasties. Okay. <laughs> I, I made sure like that was a very specific rule for me when I was going in. I was like, I don't want to wear sparkly glittery why things. why would you do that to yourself <clears throat> this is why me and your co-star didn't get a log at times because it's like you better ride ride with the ocean you guys the waves of the ocean we wear glitter you guys you were wear battling over who was wearing the most glitter and that i think that was who the was conflict battling? what type you of battle Ian. were you yes I'm, we were right because he loved his glitter at the yeah, end of it totally and he you, didn't and, want to shimmy either and you guys and you got were doing photo trouble. shoots and it was like wait he's shining right. more than i am and so that creates and then conflict. we got super bowl ratings that's just the difference that's all <laughs> drop the mic if i could <laughs> mic drop mic drop So we are going to discuss your experience on Dancing with the Stars. Would you have done it if sh you and Sharna were no. not? You would have never. Have they asked you? They had asked me for like 15 years oh, and it was just wow. a hard pass. Every why? Time. Because I, I've never wanted to be a dancer. Like, I have no why? draw to being a dancer. Like I was, I've, uh, I've been consistently working. Because you saw Ian's experience and you were like, uh. I no when he um I remember when he texted me he was so excited when he was going to do the Aww. show like he was genuinely excited about like it like actually yeah and I was like oh good you know good for you that's that's amazing but it was just nothing that but then something in something must have we Sean and I were dating and it was covid and uh it just kind of felt like right. the stars aligned for it. Dina reached out and she was so like, she hey. she reached out. So I was yeah. wondering if Sharna tried to convince you. No. So Sharna and I had talked before 
that jokingly, and we were like, yeah, ne- we'll never do something like, we'll, like we'll never do the show together and do that kind of stuff. That's ridiculous. She agreed. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we were like in cahoots. On, For real. Okay. Got yeah. it. Got it. So then when Dina reached out and she was like, Hey, so I'm reaching out, you know, um, see if you guys want to be partners and dance <laughs> on the show. And, uh, it was a different situation. Was it a hard no at first? It wasn't a hard no. No, it was, um, when the offer came in, it was like, I, Sean and I really sat and talked about it. And we were like, this is a big, it's a big thing. Yes, of course. It's, we're going to be putting our relationship in front of the cameras for, and And you're going to see another side of Sharna that you may not have wanted to see. It's true. I I wasn't sure what I was going to see. Regardless. But that was, but for me, that was a thing. It was like, I want to see what your life, because I had gone to dance things with her before then. Like she did, um, she did one thing at like Universal Florida and mm-hmm. then Disney Florida. And mm-hmm. It was a convention. And there was a part of me that was like, uh, like when she would dance at it and she'd be like, what do you, you know, what'd you think? I'd be like, amazing, obviously. <laughs> like what, you know, that's, why are you even asking me what I think? Aww. Not realizing how much really has gone into it yeah. in, within her life. Yeah. Um, that's so beautiful that you care and that you want to in, like actually put yourself in a vulnerable situation like dancing with the stars. Cause it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, honestly, I don't know I exactly no how it feels, but you're basically doing something you've never done before. You're moving your body like you've never moved before. And not only is that happening, but you're being filmed and being yelled at by your girlfriend. I've so yeah. So that was, yeah. <laughs> so that was a weird dynamic to figure out like how I'm sure, you, you know, because for her, she was like, she obviously we're dancing together. So she's, she's in charge and and doing all that. But at the same time we're together and it's like, uh, you know, how important is doing incredibly well in this compared to our relationship doing incredibly well. So you're like competitive. She's super competitive (laughs) and she's super good at what it is she does. So it was a learning experience for her. That's beautiful. It was amazing. See, I turn into um, a different person. It's almost like I have split personalities, right? So it's like, here is Cheryl Burke. So sweet. Oh, it's like girl next door. Not even, but like anyway, but you know what I mean? Like approachable. And then there's like Cheryl Burke, the taskmaster, the girl with the, who had the I, dumb and dumber haircut, not to call, who is just so... <laughs> not dead. to call you out, but Ian had like both of his PTSD. feet. He had to have surgery on his feet. Oh, come on. That's his problem. No. That, that was, was that. Listen, that was you. Just you. Just like you danced feet. him into the ground. Well, hey, listen, you forced him to wear his part- dancing shoes during rehearsal and everything. What he is he had, supposed to wear? Not I, dancing shoes. This is I'm dance just, rehearsal. I'm just saying, Cheryl. Get down. Get on all fours and I'm ju- you call know, me daddy. I'm just, just calling kidding. it like it is. It, it, listen, it's, uh, you. What? I've I've heard. <laughs> I've heard about you. You are a legend within the dance world uh, as far as being um, a a taskmaster. Yeah, I know. But that you can blame ABC Disney for that because they kind of labeled me like that. So I've just continued. I blame them. Just kidding. I take full accountability. You should yeah. take full. Because like, okay. I was going to stop you right no, there. No. I was like, no, wait I'm a minute. I'm all about it. No, this no, is no. the way I was trained. It's called <laughs> tough love. And I'm not one to give great, like, I'm not like, my love language isn't words of affirmation. What is your love language? It's uh do what Acts as I service. say. Yeah, or, it's like uh, yeah, I'm there, the there boss. Yeah, no, right, no. Okay, it really Your is. Love no, I'm not I am like the that. boss. I'm not like you that. listen to me. No, no, it's kind of like and things will be great. No, it's like it's like you know, just show that you care by doing what you say you're gonna do. Period. End of discussion. Whatever that is, that's act of, that's acts of service. But like you interpret it, your perception of that is like, do what I say, go down, give me ten push ups, and like shut up. No, for me, it's more Isn't like. Is that everybody's perception of what it is you're, acts you're of saying service? right now? Service? No, it's like no. help around the house, you lazy. F- okay. Like right. that. That's what acts okay. of service is. All I right. think. Anyway, <laughs> it's not about me. This is about you. <laughs> Well, what? it's it's funny how those those roles have shifted because yes, this definitely. is now about you. Let's talk about no, your childhood. No, it's definitely not about me. Let's oh, get into your How life. long do you got? Let's learn definitely. about Cheryl Burke, shall we? Oh my we? God, no, <laughs> let's not. I'm so tired <laughs> of talking about just me. Um, okay, but I really want to know, how did you guys overcome the battle of being, first of all, your relationship was completely out. Anyway, the point is, is that you kind of know your role, right? Like in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And did they, 
ask or did they say to you guys like we're going to do we're going to talk about like your health issues or we're going to do this or did were they straight up like we, honest we did we did talk about that stuff i mean we we had it very clearly carved out contractually that oh. like we weren't going to go there on some things like our our relationship was really important to of us course. and so we would give some but we had a whole bunch to give but of that, course but uh, honestly at the end of the day i don't know if the rest of it was their f- focus i mean they really i uh, i feel like they knew what they had they had something that was completely unique to what what the show is they had mm-hmm. they had two people that were actually In together love. yeah um so they were like i we're going to base all of their stuff off of that and after how long did you last till we did four dances four so you did one month plus rehearsals so it was like six well, weeks because no, we did the disney thing remember it was two it was two dances oh, one that's after I got the, covid yeah exactly oh my god yeah <laughs> i danced in my so living we room did um we did the villains night and then the heroes night Oh my God. And we got eliminated after Villains Night and it was a double elimination. Yes, I remember now. We were dressed, we did Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and how did you, how were you eliminated as, as a pirate? Were you a pirate? Oh, you yeah. like, oh, I was in full prosthetics. It was a whole, like, I was on stage. I, like, it's, I, we spent like an hour doing, because I was Babosa. So it was like, I had You're scars like, and like <laughs> full, and it took like an hour and a half to get it all off afterwards. Oh my God. When Snooki was on Dancing with the Stars, she also got eliminated during a time like that, like a yeah. theme night. She was crying because she was so sad she got eliminated. She was like a ghost, and her white makeup just was slowly dripping off her cute little <laughs> face. It was the saddest thing in the world. Like, I just wanted to like, I was like, Please. That was a meme for sure. Right, for sure. Yeah. But did you have an overall great experience on Dancing with the Stars I, or was it something that you'd never do again? I wouldn't say that it's something I would never do again. It was it was an interesting experience. It was it wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. Like it was right in the it was a learning experience. What did you learn? For me. Um I learned the importance of keeping certain priorities my priority no matter what is going on like boundaries yeah like okay this is relationship first in all of this so yeah. you guys can say whatever you want in judging you can you know run wild with whatever you want for me it was just a reminder of like keep keep my eye on the ball like and stick to your morals stay values focused. and beliefs yeah stay yeah. focused like no you know Keep in mind what is really important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, I was like, I, judges' awesome. scores are not important to me compared to having a healthy relationship. So I can stand here and they can go, oh, yeah, your arm. And it's like, okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're is, like, you know, thanks, I'll I'm take not, that note I with liter- me. Literally, I'm never going to, I'm not going to dance again you're never after gonna this. Like the grocery I'm going like to dance, this. I'll dance with Sharna at home. Right, or so for your I wedding, congratulations. Yeah. So I don't, oh, yes, thank you very much. But wait, how, why do you think you got eliminated? Do you think you got eliminated because purely off the dancing or do you think you, there's a conspiracy theory? I have theories. I have my my um, my thoughts about it for sure. Yeah, but but Shana was quoted them. on on your podcast saying that she believes that she when she texts right, so she texts one of the execs and she goes, "I this is not what we agreed to doing. Like I don't like the way we we're coming across. Just if this is what we're going to continue to do, just let us go, eliminate us, right." Now, yeah, so you can't got, ask to be eliminated, like because it doesn't happen. Like it is like there is rules. Standards and practices do count votes, right? It's 50-50. Right. 50% judges, 50% votes. Is that, but didn't that change though after Bobby Bones? Isn't, aren't judges scores so worth So the judges more? get to no? choose who goes home. Is that what happened with you in your case? They do. No, because it was a double elimination. But I think what, so my, my theory is, or my thought on it all is we were, uh, they they heavily focused on the relationship within the routines and the stuff we were doing, mm-hmm. but then we were judged poorly because of those choices that were made on the production side. So we were kind of just pawns in the middle, and it was like I, you know, I remember when when we were standing up in front of the judges after doing um, Disney uh, Disney night, and we had danced to. Um, 
what was it? Snow, Snow White. And we had the kiss in the beginning and it was this whole romantic waltz, thing. right? Yeah. Beautiful. And then we were judged of like, I think you guys are leaning too heavily on, you know, it's too romantic. You're leaning too heavily on Wait, the relationship. Who said that? Who said that? The judges. And we were like, and I remember saying specifically, I was like, but you've seen the movie, right? Like it's a, <laughs> like, that's the whole, these are Disney romantic movies. Like what, you know, what, what did you, I don't understand what you expected us okay. to do. I think at the end of the day, everybody plays their roles. Right. You know, people, I think viewers don't realize that it's a show at the end of the day. So everybody's playing their characters. You've got these people that are um, credible dancers and judges within it, but they're not, it's, they're, they're not judging purely out of dancing. They've got, they there's a show to be made. So they're trying to create drama with it. There, you know, there are other things going on. There are other- so wait, for the listeners who don't, are not familiar with TV, what do you mean that it's a show? Like exactly what you said with Dance, the drama? Like Dancing you have with the to Stars create drama. is a television show. And right. it's been on for how many seasons now? 32. 32 seasons. You're not on for 32 seasons with just people dancing. It's got to be like reality shows. They're, they're not really real. Like they, they're they plan real. out what these <laughs> things are going to be. Right. It's, and they, and they yes. think like, Hey, what are people, what are viewers going to want to see? What's going to be an interesting cat fight? Who should we put together that, that they'll create conflict together? I mean, let's look it's at Vanderpump a, rules. Like that's a perfect example. It's right? staged. Yeah. Right. It's, it, it's, it's created and they do an amazing job at it. Yeah. So it's not, I can't knock them for that. But it's like, you have to keep in mind that yeah. is what it is. It's a television show you're watching. Do you disagree with Adrian Peterson's um, being cast on Dancing with the Stars? Like, what do you think of I that? I definitely think it's questionable. But I like, mean, I, you know, we've had controversial characters on Dancing with the Stars. I think that is also the fact that this is a TV show. Right. You know, obviously Sharna commented and I understand and I totally get it what she's saying. I also come from an abused, um, you know, childhood but like also you're under contract. Like you can't just turn around and walk out. Right. Yeah. No, you can't. It's a tough, it's a sticky situation for yeah. people because you guys as the pros don't know who you're going to be paired no. with until you walk into that room and you shoot. The, and I have to Google you. <laughs> exactly. Until you shoot the, uh, the, um, the, the day of like everybody yes. meeting, m meeting their partners. And we've already signed our contracts by then. Oh yeah. You're yeah. all, you're in, you're, you're in. already in. And it's You've got, yeah, wardrobe is is ready to go. You're you're psyched up for the season, and you're psyched up for. I'm going to be spending seven days a week with this person. It's I've an never, arranged marriage. I've never in my life done a job that is a seven day a week job like Dancing with the Stars was. They they down they, they say, downplay the whole thing. They're like, oh, wait, it'll say, be like a couple more. hours a day of Five rehearsal. Five days a week. Not even. They're like, oh, it's oh, it's the, it'll be the easiest thing. And then all of a sudden, you're there and you're rehearsing, and you're like, I need another like six hours a day to be ready for Monday because my brain doesn't remember choreography. That's like I'm not I'm not from that world. Like I don't. That's not what I do. Um, and then you start. You're like, I don't want to look like a dummy on Monday. So then you're just and you're sweating and the tension that it creates. Oh man. But what a great formula, huh? It's a great formula. Whoever made this up, kudos. It's genius. Kudos to you for manipulating. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but like, I, first of all, you and Sharna though, that is the most important. And I'm so, I, I mean, like, honestly, I, I couldn't be happier for Sharna. Mm. The last five years of Sharna's like Dancing with the Stars career, let's say, don't you find how it's all just honestly meant to be in a weird way when it Absolutely. comes like, yes, you could see both sides. Right. But I don't think maybe, I don't know. I'm not psychic, but like, I'm just saying maybe if things were different, if she did go back, maybe things wouldn't unfold the way it's been unfolding, which Absolutely. has been a beautiful thing. Uh, we are, Sharon and I talk about it all the time. We're big believers in the universe puts things in front of you. Mm hmm and has a plan for you and you, you either fight it or you sit back and you go, okay, I, you, you know, the, the plan is bigger than what I, what I can think of. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, f funny plan wise. I, I was the season before me that Sharna had done dancing with Jesse. They had reached out to me for, 
if I had done that season, I most likely would have been partnered with Sharna. Sharna has like a has always had a very strict don't date my partners thing. Oh, really? I oh, didn't yeah. know that. Oh, she's like she's like that's why I'm she's sure such you a beast. Gotten in there. I, I <laughs> but I don't think I I don't I honestly don't know if it would show her your hip action like your rumba figure eight. You would yeah, have been see, right that in there. Have done it at all. That's, That's interesting. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't know that about yeah. Sharna. Yeah. So um, there were huh. all these th- there were all these different times where we could have met. We had the same business manager, and so we could have met. So Lori. do we. So we we could have met in all these different ways, and we never did. But it wasn't the right time. Like if we honestly, if we had met the year before on Dancing with the Stars, I wasn't in a place where I was when we met. She wasn't in a place where she was when we met. It took us meeting at that moment, being in that place for this relationship to work the way that it has. Brian, thank you so much. When are you getting married? Where are you getting married? And where's my advice? I don't like your questions. You don't like how direct I am? Yeah, I think your podcast has taken a turn for the worst at this point. Just lie. I think It's called Sex and uh, Lies and Spray Tans. I I think you're asking very inappropriate questions. Wait, I have to do Fire Rapid I'm going to see if there's (laughs) HR somewhere that that I can reach out to. In that closet. Right, okay, fantastic. They're busy right now. We're really quick. We're going to do this. This is rapid, rapid fire, fire and that questions. was part of the rapid fire was the marriage questions, but oh, it's okay. okay. Don't You don't have to answer whatever you're not All comfortable right. with. We're going to name one member of the cast of uh, Beverly Hills 90210, my fave, most popular. Most popular, Luke. <sighs> most insecure. Oh, jeez. I can't, I don't want to say. <laughs> okay, fine. Fair enough. I'm, I'm going to plead the clown. fifth on that one. Ian. Most confident. Uh, Shannon. Most flirty. Probably me. Then, oh, I heard that. Don't worry. Me. Don't worry. Hey, yeah. this is your past. Most friendly. I was a kid. That's right. But yeah. Most what? Friendly. Most friendly, Luke. Oh, that's it. Oh my God, we would have been perfect together. Most uh, like- what could have been? <laughs> could have, would have. <laughs> most likely to stumble drunk out of a bar. That's fun. Tori. Oh, <laughs> love that. Most serious. <laughs> most serious? Um... Jason? No. Uh, Jenny. Oh, yeah. most fun. Probably Jason. Who would you want to be stuck on a deserted island with? And a, a desert, like, it, like, like, a, done, a like, desert like, island, not like a no, dessert made island. No, like island. not full of like ice cream, not like, you know. <sighs> a desert island, uh, Luke. Most intimidating. Three more. Nobody. Cool. Who do you talk to the most to this day? Ian. Always or late. Shannon. Who's always late? Who was always late on set? Shannon. <laughs> always on time? I was pretty on time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Flirty on time. Okay. I get it. Thank <laughs> okay, you so, so much. Okay. That, so that's my love language. That flirting is your love and on time. Flirting. And wait, okay. please tell my listeners your, about your podcast and where people can find it yeah. and what's next. Yeah. So uh, my, my new podcast is called Oldish. Um, it's with Sharna and, uh, and Randy Spelling and it's on, uh, iHeart here or anywhere that you, um, listen to podcasts. So many options. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me, so Cheryl. Fun. So nice to so nice, talk to you. Right? Like I've, we've run like, into each other right. so many times, but we've never done this. Thank you. <laughs> Make sure you guys follow us at Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans on our Instagram handle and make sure you comment. Let me know who you want me to interview. What do you all think? Let me know. 